Geographers, congratulations, we're at the halfway point of Unit 4. Yes! Now, today we're going to be looking at a bunch of different conflicts between boundaries. We'll be talking about international agreements, the law of the seas, and also resource disputes, where countries are fighting over who should get this resource, who should get that resource. It's going to be a bunch of fun, so sit back and enjoy as we get into Unit 4, Topic 5. So the last time on the Mr. Sin channel, we went over a bunch of different boundaries that exist in the world today. And if you missed that video, make sure to go back and watch it. It's going to be really important for you to understand. Today, though, we're going to look at what happens when these boundaries are contested. Countries contest boundaries for a variety of reasons. And the first type of kind of contested boundary we're going to look at is a definitional boundary dispute. A definitional boundary dispute is just what it sounds like. Countries are contesting the border because they don't understand or don't agree with the definition of the boundary. Here, countries involved will often sue the other country in the International Court of Justice. Essentially, it's the world court. The goal here is to try and determine what was intended when the boundary was originally established. Once the court figures out what the boundary was meant to be, then the dispute would be solved. Disputes can also happen because of the changing geography of a region. These disputes are known as locational boundary disputes. For example, let's look at the state of Mississippi. Some places in the state have actually found themselves in Louisiana, and this is due to the Mississippi River, how it's shifted over time. The original boundary and the definition of it isn't being contested. What's happened, though, is the geography has changed over time, and so the boundary has changed with it, and this would be a locational boundary dispute. Our next boundary dispute is an operational boundary dispute. These disputes happen when two countries that are next to each other disagree on a major issue involving the border. For example, we could look at the United States and Mexico. Both countries agree where the border is, but they can't agree on how best to handle border crossings. The boundary itself is not what's in dispute. It's more of control and operation of the boundary that is being disputed between the two countries. Our last dispute is an allocational boundary dispute. This one is pretty similar to an operational boundary dispute in that it's not debating the existence or location of the boundary. However, this dispute is what's inside or on the boundary. Most of the time, it's over natural resources. Say we have a large oil reserve that goes over between two states. Who has the right to drill it? Who gets to take more or less of the actual resource there? This would be an allocational boundary dispute. Since we're on the topic of an allocational boundary dispute, let's talk about the sea for a little bit. Now, when talking about this, we have to talk about the Law of the Sea. So we have to start with UNICLOS, which stands for the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. This happened in 1958, when the UN held a conference to better understand how to deal with allocation boundary disputes in the sea. The result of the conference was the Law of the Sea being adopted. The Law of the Sea is comprised of three different parts. The first part is territorial waters. This zone extends 12 nautical miles from shore. And in this zone, states may set laws and regulate the passage of ships. The next zone is the contiguous zone. This is between 12 and 24 nautical miles from shore. Here, states may enforce laws concerning pollution, taxes, customs, and immigration. The last zone is the exclusive economic zone, or EEZ. This is between 24 and 200 nautical miles. Here, states have the sole rights to the natural resources in the area, such as oil or fish. After that, you're in international waters and no state has control. If conflicts or disputes arise over resources or disagreements about the law of the sea, states can take their dispute to the International Court of Justice. Currently, the biggest dispute over the law of the sea is in the South China Sea. The South China Sea is a sea that is extremely rich in natural resources. It's estimated that there's over 11 billion barrels of oil, possibly up to 190 trillion feet of natural gas, and around 10% of the world's fisheries. So there's a lot of economic potential in this one sea. So as you can imagine, there's countries that are fighting over it. Oh, and it's also connected to a choke point that has a ton of global trade going through. Currently, there's five countries that have a claim to part of the South China Sea. The majority of these countries use the law of the sea to justify their claim. China, however, has ignored the law of the sea and claims they have a historic claim to the area. China is using the nine dash line to claim the majority of the sea. The issue with the line is it's confusing. It originates back to old maps from naval expeditions in the 15th century. Over the past 10 years, China has tried to up the ante by actually building islands in the South China Sea and then putting military bases on there as they try to expand their control over the sea. In order to build their islands, China sent ships out 
over reefs in the South China Sea, where they dumped a bunch of different sand. The sand eventually accumulated enough that an island formed. Then they would again put their military bases there. So China has been growing their presence in the South China Sea, ignoring the law of the sea from the United Nations and using this nine dash line to try and claim about 90% of the South China Sea as their own. Now in the middle of the South China Sea is a cluster of islands known as the Spratly Islands. Currently the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, and China claim this area. This area is really important because geographically, it's in the middle of the sea, but it also represents a claim to the South China Sea. Any country that is able to claim the Spratly Islands would be able to then expand their EEZ, that 200 nautical miles where they are in charge of the resources. So there's a lot of tension over the Spratly Islands. Now the Spratly Islands have been a focus point of a lot of countries around the world because believe it or not, China does not acknowledge the Philippines, Vietnam, or Malaysia claim to the islands. China believes it's theirs. And recently they've been increasing their military power in the region, working on taking over other islands there one by one. This has gotten the United States involved. And now while the United States does not have a historic or actually really any claim to the South China Sea, the United States uses their Navy to help enforce laws on international waters and try to also work with the UN for the law of the sea. This has definitely grown some tension with China, as China sees that as us kind of coming into their backyard, and they're not quite happy that the United States has ships so close to China, and that we're also interfering with their plans for the South China Sea. For now though, we're gonna have to just play the waiting game to see what happens with the South China Sea. One thing is very clear though about this region, Tensions in the South China Sea will remain high as the world is focused on this region. This boundary dispute is not only going to impact the political climate of those countries fighting over the area, but the global economy as well. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you have not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and joining the Mr. Sin channel. Next time we'll be looking at Unit 4, Topic 6, where we'll talk about internal boundaries. Don't forget to answer the review questions and check your answers in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think about the South China Sea. Should the United states be intervening is china's claim valid thanks again geographers for watching the video i hope you have a great day and until next time i'll see you online